Hey there! Do you like fighting? Do you like sparing? Do you like feeling guilty? Well then, boy howdy, do I have a game for you! Undertale is a game where your character falls down a hole and immediately gets murdered by a flower, but then gets saved by some goat mom or something. Uh, I don't really know, it doesn't really make much sense, but... You then go on a quest to get out of the hole and back to the surface, and maybe even free all the monsters that are trapped down there along the way, even though they're all trying to kill you. Huh. Perfect, Perfect score, score on Metacritic. Metacritic! But, hey, what do you think you're doing murdering that small innocent frog? That's not what you're supposed to do, my kinder! The special thing about Undertale is that the game gives you an option to spare the enemies you fight instead of murdering them, like you're some hippie vegan fuck or some shit. If you don't do that, then the game treats you like a murderer, and it reflects on the characters because, just like real life, doing the wrong thing in this game has consequences. Very specific skeletal consequences. Uh. Dang it! God! Ah, ah shit! <laughs> no, 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 no! Bitch! Shit! No! Damn it! Fucking God! Fuck! Stupid! God damn it! Come on, man! Fuck! Oh, fucking God! Fuck! No! What? God, no! <laughs> fucking cat! Whatever! Oh. No! Fuck! No! Fuck! Stupid! No, 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 no! Ah! Whoa! What the No, no, no! Don't fucking jump at me, you piece of shit! I'll fucking stab your parents! <laughs> you see, if you go around killing everything, the game goes bad and it makes it easy for you. Until it isn't. And then it makes it really easy for you. Like, literally one-shotting bosses until it's time for it to be hard again. This game actively thinks that one-shotting bosses, characters and enemies that are supposed to be hard, is okay. Which, if I'm honest, is actively just bad game design and kind of lazy. I, I know that making a game independently is quite difficult, but honestly, uh, honestly, we really shouldn't have done that. And once you finish murdering everything, the game gives you the bad ending and deletes the actual game. And do you want the game back? Well, to do that, the game makes you sell your soul to the devil. Like, actually, your soul. You, as the player. To the devil. Uh, I'm not kidding, this is an actual part of the game, so just stay with me here. Anyway, in the pacifist run, it's actually a lot more tedious than the genocide run, because it's basically genocide, but with more side quests and some shit that gave me nightmare once, and... <laughs> the fields told me why! The game makes you kill, arguably, just the guy who deserved it the least. Like, why Why did it have to be Goat Dad? Man, he's arguably one of the best characters. Honestly, he's, well, he's got a few dilemmas here and there, but he's one of the, arguably, one of the characters who deserved it the least. Like, every story has that one character who didn't, who just didn't deserve it, and what did he ever do to you? And holy flippity fuck, what the shit? <laughs> 
and once you've gotten past all of that, the game says, Hey, why weren't you reading the one thing that happened a bajillion rooms ago? Don't you remember that skeleton dude said with a fish later one time? Yeah, that. You gotta go do that, dumbass! And then you gotta reload your save and go back and do the whole thing. Or, if you're like me, you'll delete your save and play the whole fucking game over and again because you're a dumbass! And once you've done that, you go to the end, but Flower Man betrays you and kidnaps your friend's souls, like he's Swiper from Hell. And when you think you've got to fight the Photoshop monstrosity again, he pulls a freeze out and tells me it wasn't even his final form. But no one really minds because this music is just straight fire, yo! And then after that, you gotta save your friends and st spare the goat child and uh, the end. Along your journey, you'll encounter many colourful characters such as Casper the Dubstack Ghost with the superpower of depression, and his friend, Metaton I'm a shit friend of Metron 3000. There's also Starman and his brother Ness, aka Mr. I have godlike powers but I let a 7 year old fight a demon. There's Feminism the Fish, her obligatory lesbian girlfriend moral dilemma, who's a terrible person but if you actually say that you'll get there's also minor characters like Alma the Furry. It's gonna be 376. You trying to give me a fucking seizure? Spider Girl and Spooky Mystery Man, who speaks in that one font you used to play around in on MS Word in 2007 back in primary school. Gen points for originality though. Then lastly, there's the goats, who are like the Kardashians, making the whole underground deal with their bullshit. There's Best Dad, Murder Plant, Small Bean, and the least morally ambiguous person in the entire fucking series. Like, I get that people give Asbor shit for murdering six kids, but Toriel's plan to get six more souls after taking one wouldn't have worked because I highly doubt the humans would be too thrilled if a monster came out of a hole with the soul of a dead kid and asked for six more. They'd probably th just kill Asgore then and then the kingdom would have no monarch and Toriel literally disappeared when her kingdom needed her the most and she still has the audacity to pin it on him like what kind of bitch has scummy piece of shit? <sighs> All in all, I gave Undertale a rating of 6 dead kids out of 7. The story is lit, the soundtrack is great, and the gameplay keeps you on your toes. Go buy it, it's one of the best $20 games out there. But seriously, is Toriel just gonna get away with all that shit or...